Welcome everyone. This video is another video in the Let's Play series. And these videos are all aimed at us learning some games we can play together on my live stream or after the stream happens if you just wanna follow along at home. These games are carefully selected, ones that we can all play together on shared information. I am so excited that you're checking these videos out. Uh, today's video, today's video is about a game called Welcome To. It is a great, great game, and I am so excited to bring it here to this channel. It's a fun little one about building sort of a community out, and you'll see that in a moment. So without further ado, let's get started learning how to play the game. Here we are, this is how it's going to look on our live stream. We have some stacks here. This game is a little unique. Instead of being a roll and write, it is a flip and write. So this is the replacement of those dice we've been using. And here you're gonna see the anatomy of the cards here. We have, the, we have numbers on these stacks and then we have pictures associated with like a type that we're gonna be able to place these dice in. And as well as you can see in the corner of the cards, what the graphic is on this card. So if we flip this over, it is one of those construction graphics. So we know a construction graphics coming. We just don't know the numbers that are below these that are gonna be associated with it. All right, you guys all have this kind of sheet. Either you downloaded the template and using it on your iPad, you're using the online version, or you've printed this off and here we're building three neighborhoods and just like the street you live on the numbers go up so going from left to right the address numbers have to go up when we place them you got it these are the numbers we're placing and the decks range from number one all the way to number 15. you're gonna have to place these numbers so where am i gonna put my four where am i gonna put my 11 where am i gonna put my seven uh that's that's sort of the tension in the game and these cards are all giving you sort of a special power. So let's jump over and learn all of the special powers of the cards before we get into the flow of a turn. All right, here is the cheat sheet that sort of came with the digital template that you guys can use. And it gives us all sorts of information, end game rules, which we'll get to in a little bit. Here, we're gonna talk about the cards. It gives you sort of the house frequency number. So when you're thinking it through, for example, number eight is the most frequent. There are nine of those in the deck. So you know, that's a, that's able to sort of plan out your turn. Hopping on over to the template slash rule document that you guys all took a peek at. Here you can see sort of the end game conditions, which we'll get to in a minute. You can see the six possible card types that we're gonna look at. The pool card, when that one comes up, you're able to use the pool card kind of anywhere you want, the number, you can use anywhere you want as long as it's increasing. Uh, if the place you put the number actually has a pool graphic you get to sort of circle that pool graphic and then down below on your score sheet you'll see a sort of pool category and you cross off the lowest number or cover up the lowest number and how all of these scoring categories work guys is the the lowest number that's still exposed that's the score you get in that particular category and now let's look at fences fences are about building neighborhoods within your street jumping over here you can see that the entire neighborhoods have a white fence around them and then you have these dotted lines this is where you're going to be able to use the fence card to place there now, how the fences work, if you jump back over here, how the fences, it says build a fence on any street. Houses between fences create estates that are scored at the end of the game. So looking at this, if I put the number that's associated here, we have an 11 with a fence. So if, if I put an 11 here, let's just say, I can still put the fence anywhere I want on, on the board to create these estates. Now, estates are gonna score here as well as these planning city plannings which we haven't really gotten to all right seeing that we just talked about the fences and the estates we might want to jump down here so we're going to go in here the increase estates value estates are the size of each of the estates where the fence is so is it a two house estate a three house estate a five house estate a six house estate it's all depending on where you put those fences. Look at 
this here down here it's saying a one house estate so if i put a number here and then put a fence because the, there's already one on the outside so here that would be a one house estate if i filled that fence in it's saying my one house estates are worth one point and then you can see it just goes up from there. Twos are twos, threes are threes, all the way up to six is are worth six. But I could increase those values by using the real estate card. Uh, so here, if I placed a four somewhere and then use the real estate card, I could cross off any one of those lower values. So if I think I'm gonna have a lot of one estates, I can cross off the one and now all my ones are worth three. All my one size estates are worth three. Uh, but again, each round, you're only going to use one of these cards and numbers that are associated with it. Jumping back here to the parks, the parks are really nice. How those work is whatever street you put the number on, you cross off a park number in the corner here and it kind of shows you. And again, the one that's lowest that's still exposed is going to be your score. And here it's where whatever number, you, whatever street you put the number on, you cross off a park there. That's pretty easy. All right, let's take a look at the biz. The biz down here allows you to duplicate any house, not just the one you built. And so you can kind of, let's take a look at the biz card here. The biz gets you out of a bind a little bit, but there's a negative to it, which I'll get to in a sec. So the biz here says that you can duplicate any house, not just the one you built. And this allows you to make sort of a copy. So here you see a one and then a one with a B that shows you used a biz there. Uh, so whatever number was associated with the biz, you can put that anywhere in your city. The copy can be any number anywhere in your city as well. It doesn't have to be the number you just placed. The only rule though with biz is, is it cannot copy through a fence. So looking at this five here, if I wanted the five to go to the right here, right here, I could not biz that over that way. I could, however, biz it this way. Now I said with each biz comes a bit of a negative. Let's show you that here on our score sheet there's a biz category these are negative points if you see down below on the scoring it's minus this so each time you use a biz you cross off the lowest number just like we've been doing whatever number the lowest number that's exposed is going to be negative points all right the last category to look at here is this i like to think of it as construction and this allows you to increase or decrease the house number that's associated with this card by zero one or two so let's say that we had the number eight and i have another eight here but i really want a six if that eight was associated with a construction card i could make it a six and when you do you are going to cross off one of these here and in our online game how it works is if you cross off six you end up getting seven points if you cross off less than six you don't score any that is the solo play version of the game we're going to try that for the online but pay attention if i change that rule i'll let you know at the beginning of each of our live streams this whole bottom of your sheet is for scoring we've showed you how parks work you're going to just write down what you got on this row what you got on this row what you got on this row and then the total pools it's just going to be the number of pools you've built you know, whatever the lowest number here we just described this these are the estates and how big those are and how many you have of those and when the biz is a minus the roundabouts here are for an expansion that we're not currently playing and then here is if you ever had a number you can't place you just can't fit it anywhere given the rules so you have to cross off one of those these are eventually negative points as well as a way to end the game the thing we haven't discussed is these neighborhood bonus cards so let's take a peek at those that's these cards here these are giving you a bit of a goal in terms of those fences that we talked about so here you this one's asking you to build a, a, an estate of six two estates of six in fact if you did build two estates of six you'd get 10 points and on our live stream i'm going to ask you know has anybody built an estate and you're going to tell me right away that yep like i finished n1 or i finished n2 this round if you're the first to finish it we're going to then flip that card over now everyone else that finished it in the same round as you will get the full 10 points but everybody else that finishes it a round later two rounds later five rounds later they're only going to get six points for that and they're going to write that point value down here in n1 
if they completed N2, which this one's looking for two sets of three and a four. And the N3 is looking for a one, two twos, and a three. When you use an estate for one of those scoring cards, you can never use it again, and you can never subdivide it. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say I put a fence here. Now, this estate's not done until I fill it up with numbers. So let's just say I had that all filled in. And let's say I had another estate of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say I had a fence there, and let's say I had a fence there. So that's an estate of six. And let's just say that that was all filled in with numbers, and I want to show that I've used it to fulfill this particular N1 requirement. Again, it has to have all the numbers filled in. It has to have the fence. This one has an automatic fence here at the end. And then the fence I put, this one has two fences. If they were all filled in with numbers and I want to score that, I would do so by announcing that I have finished it and I fill in that bar at the top. That shows this estate's been used. Now, that means I can't use these for any other combination of one. So when we look here, if there was another one that required a six, I couldn't use it again. Or these ones that require threes, I can't subdivide this by filling in that. That's not allowed. So think about that when you're building out your estates. All right, let's show you what a flow of a turn would look like. Flow of a turn, we would flip over these three cards. We would take a peek at the things we have exposed. We'd take a peek at the, the graphics to come and we would look at the numbers and we're going to choose one number and graphic to place somewhere so i can either choose a nine and a fence a 14 and a pool a seven and a construction i'm going to take that 14 and a pool and i'm going to put it over here i'm going to 14 and because it's actually in a pool space i'm going to cover that in and then i would ask on the live stream if you're all done and we would go on to the next round and i would flip it again and again and we would choose oh on that pool i forgot i'd cross off the lowest pool value now i would have an eight and an estate a seven and a pool a three and a state uh i'm gonna choose three and a state and i get to cross off one of these i'm gonna go three because of those end game goals that there's these threes and that three there's gonna be a lot of threes if i'm shooting for those end games so i'm gonna make my threes more valuable but you, you kind of get a sense of the flow of the play that way. Let's take a look at what triggers the end game. There are three ways to trigger the end game. One is a player builds all of their houses. Really rare, haven't seen that too often. Another here is a player completes all three city plans. So that's what we were just discussing. If you finished all three, whether you were the first or not, but if you finished all three, that triggers the end of the game. And then the third and final way is if a player takes three building permit refusals, that's when you can't build and you had to cross off that you couldn't build. That triggers the end of the game and we finish off in that current round. Whoever ended up triggering it, that's it. The game is over. And we do final scoring. So how, how would we total it up in the end? It's pretty simple. We would just fly down this. So whatever you scored for your neighborhoods, you put the total there. Then your parks. This first one is whatever you cross stuff up here. Second one there. Third one there. It's whatever the lowest exposed is. Pool, same thing, whatever the lowest exposed number is. This, again, we're playing with that alternate rule. If you've crossed off six or more, you get the full seven points. If you crossed off less, you don't get the points. Here, these are the estate values. That's where your fences are. So you got to look at the fences here. And the bizes are minus points. So whatever the exposed one is for biz, that's how many minus points you get. Roundabouts, we're not playing. That's why there's the asterisk. That's for the special and here this is if you couldn't fin uh, if you couldn't place one you had to cross one of these off cross one of these off if you're the one that ended the game this way cross that off that's a negative five points yes sum all of that up that is your final score here you're looking at the digital template i just gave an example where you could fill in by just clicking this and then typing the number that you want uh, that's how that works pretty easy i gave you all the tools to play digitally if you're on a computer i wouldn't suggest using this template on an ipad i would download the other one that you can kind of fill in by hand i also included sort of the long format of the the game turns the effects so if you have a question on any of those and you need to review 
they're all right here for you. And I, I included a second copy in case you wanted to play a second game right away. And again, special thanks to Deepwater Games. Awesome. Grab yourself a copy. They're wonderful company that uh, that's allowing us to do this so thank you very much that's it guys that's how to play welcome to i hope you are able to join in on one of our live streams where we're trying this or check out some of the other live streams where we're going to be playing some of these other games in the let's play series great games to play together as always i really do hope you check out some of the other videos here on this channel this channel is all about finding joy in the journey of both life as well as teaching lots of different teaching tips gamification tips all sorts of things check them out uh, it's a wonderful community and i'm so glad to have you be a part of it so that's all we got for you today take care